All right. Uh, thanks so much, uh, everyone, for, for tuning into this later. Thanks for those of you who are tuning, tuning into it now. Uh, we're going to be talking about Google's uh, AI being used to using Teachable Machine, uh, tying that in uh, to other languages and inventing. Um, I happen to be all about students inventing stuff. Uh, and, and let me explain what I mean. Uh, for this talk, I have added a or created a Google site. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash inventing AI tools. Um, and you can go there and it's 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 going to be what I talk through as we welcome Jose um, as we talk through uh, today's today's um, spark. Hey, Paul, thanks for coming. Hey, Steve, it's great to see you again. Good seeing you too. So um, I'm going to put the site uh, again, that's bit. Um, it is bit.ly slash inventing AI tools. And I'm going to show a tab with this on the computer. All right. So um, part of why I made uh, this this site is because there is way too much uh, for me to talk about in only 20 minutes. Um, the site has a bunch of videos and demos uh, and resources, so you can kind of go through it uh, at your own pace. But I'm going to make uh, an AI tool real time along with you all. Um, I think that's the best use of our time together. And then if you want to check on some of the uh, the resources in order to, to do it again, uh, the website is there for you. So uh, I do want to point out uh, right off the top of the bat, uh, tinkering around uh, with different stuff uh, and building things and inspiring kids to build things is, is what I do in my day job. Uh, I run a makerspace uh, out in Stockton, California, uh, and I, I threw uh, some links to that on the site. OK, so we're going to be talking about two different languages. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time talking about AppScript today. Um, it is one of my favorite languages. Uh, I teach it at uh, the Teachers College of San Joaquin. It's a part of a computer science class that I teach with teachers. It does take a little while to get. And so it's not perfect for a 20 minute talk. That being said, don't worry about that. I've, I've got you covered. Um, if you go over to the Google AppScript tab uh, on the website that I made for you. Not only is there like a quick intro to how you would go about writing just a simple hello world program with app script. Um, there's also a full tutorial, 15 minutes going through how we would use Teachable Machine, how we would make a really quick web app, and then how we would tie that web app to Google's Teachable Machine. Um, so just going through the whole thing. Um, I also have a link to uh, a site that I made tied to my Google Innovator project, which goes through just a bunch of different smaller uh, projects you can do with App Script. So um, if, if you were like really hoping to do uh, the App Script, um, I got you covered. We just we just only have like 16 minutes at this point. Um, James asked the question, would you generally use Python for this? Uh, yes, I think the first uh, TensorFlow model that I made, I used uh, Python. Uh, the thing about Python, usually when I write something in Python, it's going to be running uh, on a system, like a local system. Um, I do a lot of stuff with Python, like on a Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, what we're doing here is we're making something that's uh, that's for the web. So we're using uh, apps. App Script is pretty much pretty closely a superset of JavaScript. So it works well to be able to make something for the web. Um, with the uh, with the TensorFlow. OK, so uh, let me get back to uh, our other language, Scratch. Scratch is awesome. Oh, I love Scratch uh, for student uh, coding. It's, it's uh, just a great uh, introduction point for kids, block-based coding. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to open up another tab. Uh, I'm not going to. Because again, we don't have that much time. I'm not going to spend much time on Scratch, but I'm, I'm just going to give you the uh, uh, the quickest introduction that has ever been. So if you were to go to scratch.mit.edu, and I'm going to go ahead and put 
that in our chat. I'm going to share this tab. I can hit create. It's going to make a brand new Scratch project. Um, it's taking a second to come up, but it will. The idea behind Scratch is we have all these objects. Uh, each object can have its own code. I can drag over blocks to tell my sprite to do something. Um, and really where this comes in, what we're doing is there are extensions, lots of different extensions that I can use to expand uh, Scratch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go away from normal Scratch and go to, Please do a search, or well, I'll give you the link for it. Uh, but if you want to get to it again later, uh, one, I have a link to it on the website that I gave you. Um, but also, I'm just going to put in the chat right here this. Um, it looks just like Scratch. It's a Scratch project. Notice it is it is from MIT.edu, so it's it's still uh, coming out of MIT. Um, it's just not real Scratch or full scratch. Um, there's a couple of things that that you're not going to be able to use. Uh, one of them is uh, I can't tie it. I haven't been able to tie it to like Lego Robotics. That's one of the great things about Scratch. I can tie it to a lot of physical systems. Um, and uh, another thing about it is it doesn't have like the Scratch community. Like I can't upload it and share it to other people. Other than that, it's, you know, full normal Scratch. So here we go. We are at AI blocks. As I go down a little bit, I'm going to click on Teachable Machine. Here it is. Looks just like normal Scratch. We can write code. I'm going to write the exact same program. It's going to behave exactly the same. All right. So we're all good there. Now. Just like I said before, we have extensions. I'm going to click on extensions. Sorry, you share this tab. Here we go. Back. There's my blocks moving. I'm going to turn it back and I'm going to tap on extensions. And I want to use the Teachable Machine extension. Notice we have different extensions than we normally do. Do I want to allow it to use the camera? Yes, I do. All right, there we go. And yay for Google Meet. It's able to show me in the camera here and me in the camera uh, in the Google Meet. All right, so what I'm going to do, it says, oh, we want to use a model. Well, we don't have a model yet. So I'm going to take two of our minutes, and I'm going to make a Teachable Machine model. Notice there's a link to take us to Teachable Machine. And I want us to work with an image project. So I'm going to click on image. I'm going to go standard. And the idea behind Teachable Machine is I can really quickly and easily gather a data set to train my TensorFlow model off of. Uh, it's going to use the webcam. Uh, I'm going to gather like a, several hundred photos. I'm going to train it right there in the, in the, in the web page, and then I can export that model uh, to be able to use um, in Scratch. Um, I'm going to point out I've got, I've got T. I am, uh, I really love T. And th that's going to be what I train my model on these different uh, T uh, cans. All right. So here I go. I am in Teachable Machine. I've chosen um, images. And I have a few different types of tea. I've got pear cinnamon tea. I've got wild blueberry tea. Uh, and I've got blood orange tea. Um, I can also train it off of like nothing being there, which is often a good idea. Otherwise, when nothing's there, it's going to say that it's one of those T's, which is not ideal. Um, I don't feel like doing that this time, but whatever. 
Okay. So I'm going to turn on the webcam. Let's let's see if the computer can have three cameras going at a time. If not, I've already saved uh, this model and we can use it without training it right now. But here we go. Webcam. I'm going to allow. Oh man, three cameras going at a time. Way to go, computer. Okay. Notice I've gathered 94 images of uh, the the pair T webcam. Oop. Here we go, Wild Blueberry. Okay, I've got a bunch of images of that. Um, I'm gonna do Blood Orange. Let's do webcam on that. Just getting it from different angles so it really learns it. Um, and you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead, why not have it just recognize me? Hi. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm going to train the model. Now, what's going to ask me to do uh, is to stay on this tab just a little while. It needs a little bit of time to do some processing. Notice it says don't switch tabs. Just stay right there. Um, it It's really quick about training. It's, it's not uh, a lengthy process. And in, you know, just a couple minutes, I'm going to have, boom, a trained model. Let's see. Oh, hey, it knows me. Hi, this is Steve right there. Um, it's it's a hundred percent certain that it's me. Let's see. It knows the pear tea. Let's see how it has to do with the oh, it knows my blood orange tea. And remember, check the output. It knows blueberry. It it knows all three. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export my model. <clears throat> I'm uploading it as we speak. And in just a few seconds, I, I'm going to say five, four, three. Oh, it's already done. Okay, I'm going to hit copy. All right. Um, I'm going to switch tabs back to scratch. Okay. Um, and I want to use that model that I just trained. We're doing good. We've, we're only in 13 minutes. Okay, so there's my model. I'm going to hit my green flag. And I'll know that it's loaded the model because, hey, look, right now it knows that I've got some different T's that I'm going to respond to. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a T assistant. It's, it's going to be like Siri, but for when I get tea from the cabinet and so uh, my little sprite here just gonna it's just gonna say a little bit uh to respond to whether or not uh i have i have tea so let's see um hmm. so i want it to say when it just sees me hi steve would you like some tea um, when it sees the blood orange tea, and when it sees the others, let's say blood orange tea. I think that is a time to have a bear claw. Would you like a bear claw with that? Um, blueberry tea, you gotta go, blueberry scone. Um, and then the pear cinnamon tea, I feel like that's, that's, that means I've probably already had another cup of tea. So, uh, it looks like we'll be working late. I'll play some music. Okay. And I'm just going to go here to sound, have it play a sound. Nope. I want it to start a sound. What sound do I want it to do? I'm going to bring up... <laughs> There's lots of sounds that we can choose from and scratch. Um, hmm. I want it to be. There we go. All right. So I can now test my 
my AI. Let's let's see if my AI assistant uh, helps me out with my tea. Um, let's see. I I'm I'm first going to have my blueberry tea. Oh. It asks, it asks if I'd like to have some tea because, oh, there we go. So no, sometimes it's right. There we go. Now it recognizes that I've got the blueberry out. Okay. Right now it sees that it's just me and it's like, oh, you want some tea. Okay. Um, how about, how about the cranberry orange? If I happen to take that from the cabinet. Oh, asks if I'd like a bear claw. All right. Uh, and and the last one, let's see. Uh, how about uh, the pair of Okay. Uh, All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. And I'm also, oh, there we go. Stop sharing. All right. Okay. So um, that's, that's, pretty much the whole process, realize that we can also tie in other things to our invention. Um, I, I would like to suggest something like uh, Little Bits or uh, the Makey Makey. I don't, I don't know, are there any uh, Makey Makey fans uh, in, in the room or, or out there on the internet? Uh, but uh, the Makey Makey is uh, this neat, neat product that allows us to have, to create a circuit Anything that closes a circuit and it sends a key press signal um, to Scratch. Well, actually, it's a keyboard signal to your computer, and Scratch can be listening. Um, I point that out because I'm going to go ahead and share, uh, just in case anyone uh, has come in since I shared the uh, the website. Share it again. It's uh, bit.ly slash inventing AI tools. Uh, just went there in the chat again. Um, I'm going to share my tab on that. Okay. So remember, we talked a little bit about AppScript. Not much, just, just that AppScript is a language um, that exists inside of like Google Docs, Google Sheet, um, Google Slides. And I can go from my slide and write uh, scripts that... Um, that change my Google Doc. So uh, one example that I have here on the website for you um, is a data logger. Um, I should point out I'm a part of um, STEM programs at the San Joaquin County Office of Ed. So uh, very often projects that we, we do are tied to, uh, well, always tied to either an NGSS uh, science standard or a, um, one of the computer science standards. So this one is a data logger. So you could set up a um, a Chromebook, simple Chromebook to be like looking at a terrarium, um, and it could be logging what say crickets or spiders or whatever is in the terrarium uh, is doing. So you, students could do uh, a science project gathering data over a long period of time, uh, which is pretty neat. You know, um, scientists do that type of a thing uh, using AI. Um, I do want to point out we could also do some inventing and and there's the the website has an entire tutorial of how to do that um i'm going to go ahead and click on uh our scratch ai blocks link it's going a little bit slow i've got a bunch of stuff going i'm gonna i'm gonna close down a couple of tabs to try and speed things up a bit okay there we go so i'm going to click on home um, and what you'll notice at the home site, uh, I have uh, a couple of projects uh, that I've made in the past. Uh, one of them is a AI teller. So it like notices what you're buying when you place an item on the table and it makes a total or it keeps total of how much you're buying. Um, so students can, can build all sorts of stuff. All they need to do is code and scratch and use Teachable Machine. Thanks everyone, I'm, I'm at time. So thanks everyone for for coming in. Uh, thank you for uh, for watching this.